Hello and welcome back. We have question three, exploring the unknown. This is one of the most reviewed uh, topics just because I think that the exam and how it's changed for AP Lang, uh, Q3 is doing a lot more uh, like resiliency, grit, mental health, school related topics. And so I'm gonna break down basically what you're doing. Now for the actual rubric, when you get to that, um, it's pretty clear in that rubric what you need to do. As far as you need to for this, you have to respond to the prompts with a thesis, but it has to take an actual defensible position. And I'm gonna go over that. That position, and you gotta get a one point for it, that one point is really going to be your pass fail. That pass fail is determined by this. So for the actual, um, for the actual prompt, when you get to that, you'll read through it and be like, okay, we have a book, we have an author, that's great. Um, and then we have a quote. And it's good to kind of go through and understand what the quote's saying. So let's kind of do that together really quick. Um, we tend to not choose the unknown, which might be a shock or a disappointment or simply a little difficult to cope with. And yet, and yet, this is really important, it's the unknown that with all of its disappointment, uh, disappointment surprises, uh, it's the most enriching. So you have to take a position now on that. And so when you look at that, and this is what it basically boils down to, we see something that's negative, right? We tend to choose the, uh, we tend not to choose the unknown. So that's good to know, which might be a shock or a disappointment or simply, and that's the reason. If we don't do this because why? Well, which might be a shock or a disappointment or simply a little difficult to cope with. That's why people avoid the unknown, right? Because the unknown's scary because you have a thing called what syndrome? Imposter syndrome. So, and then, you know, the flip side, because they're always gonna give you two sides, or simply a little too difficult to cope with, but, and yet, this is important. Remember we talked about this? When they give you a word like yet or however, that's gonna be when they have the shift. So you have perspective one, perspective two. The unknown, with all of its disappointments and surprises, that is the most enriching. And yet it is the unknown with all of its disappointments and surprises that is most enriching. So when you look at that, and then you're trying to figure out with the actual, like, according to the rubric and getting a 101, like, you have to take a position on this. So if you're taking a position on it, and you see something like this, you have to argue your position on the value of exploring the unknown. Where did I go? That? That's right. Anytime I move it, it goes bonkers. So you'll see in this document here that there's kind of a breakdown and a deconstruction, but essentially, uh, just being straight with you, and, and you know, this is pretty cool. Mr. Kirk and I, uh, he taught a student, Emily Moore as did I. She is at Stanford right now, and she wrote this essay, got a five on the exam, but be with me a second. The girl worked really hard and got into Stanford, and she wrote all about this. Do you want to know why? Question three is all about anecdotes. It's great that you can bring up a reference, and you can refer to this, but don't make the mistake of just referring to this. You should, that's great. And your thesis to get that point will be just that saying that people fear the unknown. Like in that's your thesis, people fear the unknown so they avoid it. However, for the people who embrace it, they go on to do tremendous things once they get past imposter syndrome. And then you go on to talk about that. And then you make your allusions to that. Emily spent half of her paper making it about her and giving examples of her friends. And she got a five. Do you want to know why? She explained and didn't just give little minute details. She went into detail. Delineation. She was meticulous. So listen, what she did, and I know I have some athletes here. I know I have some artists here in science. Take what you know and use it. That's the beauty of this exam. You don't know something, don't write about it. You write about what you know, and you have to tie it to this, right? So Emily's, and I'm gonna have hers posted because she used it to get into Stanford. 
she said that she lived a life of gymnastics and for her it was something she struggled with because she was a number. You perform something and it's so hard and it takes everything out of you. You know the gymnasts that are actually gymnasts spend like four to five hours a day training and they have to sacrifice because of travel and it's hard to keep like friends consistently because you're just not around. So you perform, perform, you're a number. This is your score. You're a number. Perform, perform. And then this is a lot of people yelling at you all the time. And perfection is never attainable in that sport. And eventually, at a young age, she goes, I'm not just burnt out, I'm over it. So she wrote this paper about how she had it and was like, you know what, I'm going to try diving. It's kind of similar to gymnastics. And she wrote a whole body paragraph or two on the fact that she had to transition. There was the unknown of... Am I going to be good? Which she was horrible. She said she literally smacked and flopped off. I don't know if you've been off the three meter. It looks like you're like 20 feet, 30 feet high, and you're like, I have to go off of this. And when you smack, it hurts. And she wrote about how that unknown in the beginning was horrific, but she's so glad she did it because unlike gymnastics, she started to see incremental improvements, which meant her mental health started to have incremental improvements. And then eventually with using all of this, she wrote a paper that was about what she experienced. And she said it's not just her, other people do it too. She, she quoted Michael Jordan, I'm shooting your shot, no one else is gonna do it. You miss 100% of the shots that you what? Don't, do. Don't take. And for her, she wasn't doing that. And in her paper, she referred to herself in her experience, she referred to Michael Jordan. She referred to a few people. They're, what's that called, rhetorical device, when you refer to somebody? Illusion. She made illusions. Does that sound so difficult? Question three is really going to be what you can bring that is already what you have. Bring in the anecdotes, make allusions to other people, but always tie it to the thesis and take a stance on that thesis. You know, is, is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Do you agree with this? Like, take a stance and make sure it's about the unknown, period, end of story, and each body paragraph will focus on a different nar uh, <clears throat> narrative. A musician you like, a sports person you like, about how they went through this, maybe a family member, but make it more obscure, like, like for instance, this is a person, and this is what they went through. As long as they can validate it, that is it. That's question three, okay? Good. Bye.